First thing in the morning here and I have to wake up Chase. We have an editing emergency and a flight to catch. <laughs> Chase, <laughs> we didn't get the new video in time and we can't review it. So we need an intro. <laughs> Give me an intro. You need, okay, this week at Edison Motors, we do a lap around the test track, Johnny goes logging, and uh, we rip up the DOT scales. You guys remember Alex from Kootenai Heavy Haul? He is one of our top tier YouTube members and that means that he is in the big group chat. So one of the things we did that was reach out in there because he hauls logs into our local log reload. With our circle track being finished, we needed to get a loaded truck out on the track. And conveniently enough, Alex was hauling in here today. So figured, well, good as chance as any, he can be the first loaded truck to drive around our test track and give some feedback. 61,000 kilograms. See how she holds up anyways. Yeah. There's no like sharp corners. It's about like this all the way. That's good. So just a uh, medium pace. Whatever you feel comfortable with on the first time, then we'll try and push it on the second. This don't seem bad. No. I think we're probably gonna have to increase the bank angle. We're at six degrees. I'd like to keep a six degree slope on these two lanes and this is the outer lane. I think I'll bring it up to like 15. Okay. That when you're lower, you can move down in there and as you increase your speed, it would be ideal to get a truck doing 100. Yeah. To do 100 around here, I think we'll need a much more aggressive bank angle. I think, I think so, yeah. Well, you've seen some of the banks on that road out there. Yeah. Like NASCAR banks out there. That's how to do it. Got to convince the Saskatchewan Flatlanders that you don't want to just slide off a bank. <laughs> yeah. That was better than the road I just came off of, though, that's for sure. I would imagine it's probably better than the Hogan Road. Yeah. What are we doing now? Uh, 43. Ah. So it feels totally fine at 43. Oh, yeah. This is the only sharp corner on this one, but that's as sharp as the sharpest corner is. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, this one's fast, so. Yeah. Didn't take long to build it. No. Yeah, we just stay left here. This is the straight stretch here. So you can come off and either run down the straight stretch or keep the bank. I think this transition here is a little rough. Yeah, it should be. It should continue on the smoothness. Like you roll over a little bit and you pitch down. Yeah. All right, now we pick her up. We will just have to watch her grapple tracks. That's the only issue. Oh, uh, I think keep her as long as you can see by Theron that there's no one there, then yeah. we can let her go. How are we looking here? Uh, doing about 70 now. Well, this feels fine at 70. Oh yeah. Back end pushing a little bit, but that's more just a shitty setup. Well, if this setup can do 70, if you could pretty well be fine with a low bed at 70. Oh yeah. I wouldn't do a hundred, but. No. <laughs> with a bank angle, a little more increase on the bank angle, I think you'd be doing 90 without any problem. Oh yeah. Might be a gravel truck coming now. Yeah, he'll be turning left onto the test track. They're laying down the uh, asphalt. Oh, yeah. That'll be nice once it's asphalted too. Higher oh, bank sure, angle, yeah. paved, and you'd be rocking. Yeah, it's a little dusty right now. You good with that or? That works. Yeah. We know we can do 70 loaded. Yeah. That was the goal for CMBSS. It's loaded at 70, empty at 100. Huh, that's not bad. What do you think? How did the test track look? It felt good. It needs a bit more bank angle in some of the corners. Yeah. Then we can get some more speed. But other than that, I was able to maintain 70. No, oh, see, that's fine. That is the minimum. So the minimum standard we need is to be able to maintain a loaded speed of 70. But yeah, I think that feedback riding around with them, we increase that bank angle from a six degree across the whole thing. We'll bring that outside edge up to about a 10, 15 degree in the slope. And I think what, get to 90 with that. Oh, pretty easy, I think, yeah. Perfect, we'll, uh, we'll get the bank angle increased over the next few weeks and we'll have you run it again. Perfect. Awesome, thanks so much for helping. Of course. So the concrete bumper truck is back and today is the final day of the pour. So same thing we were doing before. We're just pouring these footings 
tomorrow we're gonna take all of the forms off and then the next day joe will come in with his excavator you can see the pour we did three days ago is already being covered up packed in got these ones done we got to run our water lines in for the shop still but this is going really really well everything is happening exactly on time the shop has showed up behind me this is the future shop that we will be building trucks in so in all honesty it's going pretty well things are all happening on time this will be done for next week we got five six days to get it covered plenty of time to spare so things are happening on time and so far we've been under budget for what they estimated on on the concrete significantly under budget so turns out things go really well when it's not government contracting we're on time we're under budget we'll get the shop up here starting next week couldn't go better exciting now that we got that top layer on the test track and packed we are bringing the asphalt in luckily there is a large road resurfacing project happening just outside of our property so they came over and offered us hey do you want the um, asphalt that we're taking off all those grindings are taken off as a repaving they're bringing them in here they're dumping them here so we have free asphalt crush that we can lay down on the test track so we'll get this on put some emulsion on it we'll run the packer over it and we will have a paid test track for virtually free. This is going to be absolutely awesome. We are gonna have a paved test track to do our truck testing on, so 10 out of 10. Big shout out to these guys for helping us out. The road by our house in Merritt actually had this. You put it down there and then they spray this emulsion, you pack it in there and it sets up pretty good. It's not paved, but a paved track would cost millions of dollars. At least of one million. So this is the next best thing. We are at the scales directly across from our property. I'm with Scott from Terrace. And what are we doing here today? We're doing some milling. We're doing a 60 mil mill and fill on the entire acceleration and deceleration lane into the scales here. We got the milling machine right behind us here. It's about an 850 horsepower machine. We got a big drum right down here that's tearing up all the existing asphalt. Folds it into the first conveyor, which pulls up and drops into the secondary conveyor, which in turn takes it and flows it up into the truck. We're doing about 1,200 ton worth of milling here today about 8,500 square meters, which equates to about 100 truckloads of wrap. This is gonna take a fair bit to run that. Like the focus on him right now is he's grinding off at the right level while driving the machine, making sure he stays in line and on track and also doesn't run into the back of the gravel truck. Exactly, or fucking overfeed on top of the hood of the truck too. So it's there's a lot going on up here. You got a ground guy down below. His job is more so to make sure that we're milling at the right depth and that we're not running into any iron down on the ground. And this is probably best case scenario because you don't have to worry about cars hitting you either. Exactly. We're used to being on the highway with traffic flying by us on either side of us. So this, this is nice and relaxing. And this is why I do say, when you're driving past these guys, they've got so many things to focus on. Slow the fuck down. Just slow the fuck down. If they've got a stressful job. They don't need you winging by them at 80 kilometers an hour. Thanks. <laughs> Scott, well, thank you so much for helping us out with our test track and yeah. bringing the millings over. You betcha. Thanks for taking a bunch of millings that we probably would have just wasted around here somewhere. Worked out perfect. Yeah. And then uh, next year, you guys are coming back here, so maybe we can talk about getting the actual pavement on the test track next year. Absolutely. Spring. Right on. Well, thanks. You really betcha. appreciate it. Big shout out to these guys for closing the scales. And as advantage, they don't have to go over the scales today. Hold them heavy. The scales in Canada, I noticed that it seems like the US doesn't have, 
is that all the scales give you your weight up on the display. And when you go over each group of axles, you can see your weight on there as the driver. And then they give you little messages. Green means next axle, proceed, stop, bring paperwork. But when we were going over the States, we had to go over a few scales and we noticed that the scales we went over didn't have a print out of their weight. Like, do they only bring out the weights when they're open? Like we went over some closed scales because I wanted to know how much that Land Cruiser weighed. We we're gonna weigh our empty truck and then the loaded truck, but the scales wouldn't give us their weight. So if you're in the States, how do you get your weights? With the logging truck, you'd verify your scales. You got a set of scales on the truck to make sure they're accurate. You go over the government scales, it gives you your readout, and then you know if you're on board truck scales. Like, how do you do that in the States? Was it all the States? Was it only just the States we went over? Because I would imagine that'd be crazy to not have this. One of the big things I'm a fan of here at Edison is making sure that the people designing and building our truck know what these trucks do. If you remember before, we sent our guys off to Alberta to go rig moving. Now we got Johnny here. Johnny is from Italy. I wanted to make sure he had a sense of what these logging trucks do. So you guys know Alex. We sent Johnny out with Alex and well, how did he do today? Pretty good. Uh, a little tired by the end of it, but it wasn't screaming. It got pretty sketchy in some spots. Then we got stuck. We had to get a little push by the loader. I guess that told us that it's very important to have a lot of power to get up those very steep hills. They go through some really terrible bumps, so they must not fall apart with the vibrations and stuff. These are obviously not like the trucks we have in Europe. They have to be built tough. The terrain's very rugged. It's steep. The, it's not paved. It's just dirt, mud, snow. So very different. It give you a good sense when you're designing it to what kind of conditions you have to design these components to. Yeah. Now yeah. you get why we're always like, build it tougher, build yeah. it heavier, build it bigger. Yeah. So it was valuable experience then, you know? A little early, 3 a.m., wake up. It's all part of logging. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking them out. Of course. In some other good news, we got our first engine approved for use by Environment Canada. It is the Cummins X15 with the manual transmission, the normal ICE vehicle, like every other 99.9% .9 of the trucks on the road. We got approved to use that, so that's at least step one. We know we can build those trucks. We'll be able to sell the mechanical trucks. We are on our way to Ottawa right now. We'll be meeting with some of the government and members of parliament in the parliament building, which is exciting. And we're gonna be meeting with Environment Climate Change Canada at their building on Friday to discuss the hybrid part going forward. So it's exciting, it's good news. Stay tuned for the update on that one. Yeah, and if you are interested in investing, we finally got investment open for everybody in Canada now. The only place you can invest is on the Edison Motors website, edisonmotors.ca. Make sure you're going there. That's the only place you can do it through, and it's through Front Funder and DealMaker, but if you're interested in that, go, go check it out. Anyways, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Hopefully next week's video, we got some good news from Parliament.